Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt here with another game update on Nightshaders, my top-down shooter that I'm working on in my free time. I'm a game developer by day. I've, been, I've worked at companies like Blizzard Entertainment, uh, I've worked on franchises like Overwatch and Diablo, and I love making games so much that I do it in my free time too. So it's been a while since our last update. You might notice that I'm in a new place too. Um, we've been doing renovations to our house. So I'm finally out of the garage. I'm inside with air conditioning. Oh, it's amazing. Um, and I have a new desk too, so I can, it's a standing desk, so I can move around and stuff. So even though the updates have been few and far between, rest assured that I have been working hard on this thing every day. Uh, and I got a lot of cool stuff I want to share with you. And just remember, if you want to follow along with the project, don't forget to hit the little like button and subscribe. And let's get into the video. One of the bigger things I did for my project was actually move over to Unity's new input system. On the left, you can see how I used to be doing this with the input manager. I was having to manually manage all the inputs for all these different devices, which is super cool for like smaller projects. I think it gets you going quick, but isn't really scalable. So with Unity's system, I let them sort of play the middleman there. I can define actions and associate those actions with different inputs for different control schemes. So there you see I have WASD for the keyboard and the left stick on the gamepad, and Unity will just sort of figure that out for all the different controller types. So now if we jump in the game, here we'll start with the keyboard and mouse, and you can see it kind of works how it normally does. But one of the cool things that we got out of switching to the new input system was that now players can rebind all their keys uh, to what they like. So if they're left-handed or just want a different setup, you know, you can, you can change that. So we can go here and switch the attack key to O, and now when I go back in the game, if I push the O button, it's going to attack just like it used to when I left clicked. And you can reset it just by hitting the little arrow to the right of whatever command you want to reset. So now we're using a PlayStation 4 controller and it's sort of the same thing. You can see the controls menu now reflects that we're using that new control scheme. It has like buttons there instead of keys. And then here's the Xbox 360 controller. So we can go and just like we did with the keyboard, we can rebind that attack button to right, right bumper or something. Go back in the game and now I'm hitting right bumper. You just have to trust me. And you can reset it there just by doing the same thing, hitting the arrow. And yeah, that's it. It's a pretty flexible system. Unity actually has some really good examples that you can follow right in the package manager. I wanted to do something a little more custom and I found this great video from Broken Knight Games that was actually super helpful. So big shout out to him. I'm also working my way through a big list of models that I still need to make for the game. So here we got a pile of them. The first one is the shop trailer. Um, this is the one you're gonna see in level select for the shop. Then I've got a healing station. It's a little like blender there. I don't know, I couldn't come up with a better idea. Then I've got a little trampoline. You can place that down and your friends can jump off of it. Then I've got these explosive propane tanks or whatever. You can blow those up. They'll hurt you, but they also hurt enemies. Then I've got a new switch for opening gates and stuff. I've got, this is a new cool thing I've got for upgrading items. It's like a microwave, you put the item in, new item comes out. And then I went through and updated all the different projectiles. So this is actually a new one, the mouse trap. I'll show you these later. And then now we have some more finished looking art for all those different projectiles. And yeah, I'm just kind of working my way through it. I also did some more work on my level select. How it used to work before is you would make choices on how you wanted to navigate through it there wasn't really like a clear incentive on why you would want to choose one way over another. In the new one, I really wanted to communicate like what reward you'd be getting if you decided to go a particular route. So in this instance, where you're going to get, it looks like it's actually the same for both, but you're going to get a new ability, but those could be like weapon upgrades, ability upgrades, lots of candy, so like the currency in the game. So knowing what the reward's going to be, I think makes those choices meaningful and actually kind of interesting. Also, you can see that the shop is here. I, I changed the behavior of it, so the shop is now gonna be accessible all throughout the game. Another problem I worked on was dropping items. I just didn't have an elegant way to do that before. Now players can hold down the drop key and choose which item they wanna drop. That works on mouse and keyboard, and then the control scheme's slightly different on console. So here, we'll try that on the Xbox controller. So she'll hold down the, the drop button and then do left and right on the joystick. Whereas the mouse and keyboard, it actually uses your cursor's position relative to the button to decide like which one you're gonna have selected. And that's it, simple, but it works. So I really need to get my Steam page going. And to do that, I feel like I really need to make a piece of key art to sort of sell the game to people, show them what the game's about before they've actually played it or committed you know, to trying it. 
So I start off in Maya, reusing the assets that I had already made, sticking to my strengths, which is 3D. To do this, I actually work from a fixed camera like this, which is really helpful because I can just kind of pose the characters exactly how I want to fit that scene. When I'm happy with it, I move into another program called Marmoset. It's for baking, um, rendering, doing texturing, it's fantastic. This is basically how it looked when I imported straight from Maya. All my models and materials came through pretty well, even the camera. Most of my time was spent tweaking the settings and placing those little, you see those little light bulbs? Those are lights. I was placing those to accentuate the characters and try to bring them out. This is kind of what the render looked like when I was done in Marmoset, and then I moved into Photoshop. So I did a bunch of different bakes from Marmoset. They're all in separate passes, so I can combine them into the final image. This is really helpful whenever you're doing any kind of rendering. So you have absolute control once you get into the comping process. So here you'll see me build up the layers. I'm adding some edge lighting, some motion blur to things. Here's ambient occlusion. That really helps get some shadows in those cavities. So here I'm adding in some of the glows, the emissives. Then here's some more contrast and saturation. And then finally, I specifically add some more contrast to the characters to pop them out. Working towards bringing the characters off of the background. And then here I'm using a depth render to add some fog into the background to push that even farther back and make it look kind of dark and mysterious back there. And then I did some work on the title, which I think it's looking okay. I'm not really happy with it just yet. So that's kind of a work in progress. With the key art done, I can finally start shopping up those images and building my Steam page. So if you go on Steam and you search Nightshaders, you'll find it, which is really cool. It's a big milestone for me just to see it there. Even though the game's not out, this is huge. So if you want to support the game, I would really appreciate it if you could go to the Steam page and hit that little wishlist button. It doesn't cost you anything, uh, just, just a few seconds of your time, but it's really going to help the game when it launches actually get noticed. I, sh I should have started this like when I started the project. Um, I'm just not a marketer and uh, I'm a game developer, so here we are. I also did a little more work on my loading screen just to level it up a bit. There's still more to do though. So now if you go to the shop, which is that trailer model that I showed you earlier, you'll find the microwave. That allows you to pay a small fee, put your weapon in, and it will spit out a random weapon of the same tier. It's probably a little too cheap right now though. It's only 10 candy. So one other thing that I added that you might not be able to see in the YouTube video is a tilt shift effect. I'm doing this with the post-processing depth of field and you'll notice if you look at the tops of buildings or things off in the distance, they've gotten a little bit blurrier. This should hopefully draw some focus back towards the center of the screen and your character. It also sort of has a miniaturizing effect that I think adds to the toy-like quality that I want for my game. That created some new problems for me in player selects because I do that in 3D space and those characters are way too close to the camera. They were all getting blurred out. I had to do some tweaks and basically change how certain layers are excluded from different post-processing effects like that depth of field, but now I think I've got it all sorted out. While all that was going on, I was playtesting my game I even managed to get my sisters to play, who I think both of them, this was the first time they've tried it. So they were super good sports. We ran through a bunch of levels, the bosses, um, it found tons of bugs too. But yeah, they were, they were, they hung in there. This is something that's super valuable to do because after you've been working on a project this long, you sort of become blind, blind to all of its flaws. And getting new players in and new perspectives is so valuable to be able to actually keep improving the game. All right, that's the video. I hope you liked it. Remember, if you want to try the game out for yourself, you can always join my Discord and just shoot me a DM on EmptyWorks in there, and I will send you a Steam key so you can try out the game for yourself. I'd really appreciate it if you leave any feedback or you know thoughts. Um, it's super, super helpful. And yeah, I guess that's it. We're getting close, guys. Um, the Trello board is slowly starting to dwindle down. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.